the new power generator to be based upon ISP. This technology. Yes, it is the same same risk process. Um, it, it started with Power 4 in 2001. Power 5 came out in 2003 or 4. Power 6 came out in about 2006. Power 7 came out this year, 2010. And it's basically evolution of the same risk technology that IBM designed in, in 2004 and 2001. Alpha was awesome. Alpha was on the planet. In fact, Here's the funny part. When we finally did the embargo in China and started shipping them high-performance computers, you know, we had them shut off for a long time. We finally lifted the, the curtain and let China start shipping in high-performance computers. They bought every alpha box that you find on the planet. The alpha in 1991 was the 64-bit technology. The multi-core was the first 64-bit technology, the fastest, highest clock on the planet. It was a great chip. And technology. And by pretty much by the same guy who did VAX. So, great technology. It's not about the technology. Alpha couldn't sell any chip anymore. Anyway. Yeah, so the all the time. So, uh, None whatsoever. Complete set of new design guys, complete different design team, complete set of different set of binaries. Entirely different. Yeah. Alpha just lost its way because compact bottom and the compact guys didn't know what a what a Unix box was. I know that because they hired me to do consulting for them too. Right? The alpha guys, the digital guys at Compact hired me to come in and market digital Compact. The bad guys had no idea what digital was. When the ten guys found out I was doing it, they hired me to market tandem to Compact. So in Las Vegas one year, I got in front of all of the Compact sales force and I said, okay, this is the PCs you guys can always sell. It. In a digital box, it's called an alpha, true 64 box. This is just a big PC. This is a tandem nonstop. This is a huge PC. No, we got it. Nobody told us that. So if you look at the Spark T2000 family, this is the, uh, the first generation of Niagara boxes. 92 of those fits into a single four socket 750 in terms of throughput and performance. Okay. If you look at the uh, Superdome, the, the uh, Itanium, 8 to 1 Itaniums, 8 Itanium boxes, 64 core, 128 core Itanium boxes, we can now fit one single chassis. Think of what that could do for a data center. What does this mean to you? Well, let me show you. If you go in, or if you continue to try to walk down the path, this is what happens. You have a database server, and you have an application server. You basically have 16 cores deployed, because these are 8 core servers, older 8 core servers. To, to grow that, so you put a couple more servers in. We need to, to have failover, so you put a standby server in. Then you need to grow it, so you put four in and two standby servers. All of a sudden, you're up to 96 cores. And now, you got 30 databases. you got 30 servers doing 30 databases and the application servers, 480 cores. you got 20 standby servers. For 320, you got 800 cores. Think of what that does to data center space, but more importantly, think of what that costs in licensing. You pay for the license. I don't have any side based folks in here. So I want you to understand something. That's expensive from side -based. If instead, by the way, this stuff is still only running in, in the range of, even if it's a good Unix box, 20 to 25 percent utilization. Instead, you put in a power box and you run it at 50 percent utilization, which is pretty low for most power boxes. We get that down to four 64 core boxes, that's 240 cores. In spare CPUs that you don't pay for, okay, but total 256 cores. So now I've taken you from 800 cores to 256 cores to get the same kind of performance, the same reliability, and to get the equal performance, the same reliability. What does that do to your license fees? You mentioned the performance and throughput. What does it do to your license fees? Okay. But what if I can get 67% utilization, which is where we'd like to run these boxes? We'd really like to run them at 67%. If I run them at 67%, I only need six of them. If I need six, all of a sudden, I dropped 192 cores from 800 to 192. Do math on software licenses. What do you think that's going to save you? Right? But not just software licenses. Think about all that rack space that you're using up. Goes down to a couple of racks. 
significantly different way of doing business. That is key. So we migrated, we put it into a set of power boxes instead of the Intel or the Sun world. We have the same kind of clustering for standby. You have a couple choices. You can do Sybase CE, ACCE, the cluster edition. You can do Sybase ASE and cluster with either Veritas clustering, if you're comfortable with that, or IBM's high availability, HACMP, if you want to do that. We can cluster it a couple ways. What that does for your licenses, right? And we'll know when in clustering, basically, we put the, the production database on here and a clustered failover on here. Then you put another production database on here and a clustered failover on here. You put that 7 qa on both of them so you have some spare room. If this server fails, production fails over, pick up the CPUs it needs, continues to run, well, fix this one. Okay? And then when it comes back up, you just fail it back over and start running it. Now, as you can move these partitions around, like VMware, you ever heard of vMotion? Everybody heard of vMotion? Any VMware folks in here? vMotion allows you to move virtual servers from physical machine to physical machine. We can do the same thing with this. So you can actually vMotion, or in essence, we call it um, uh, cluster um, mobility. Partition mobility, this thing. <laughs> <laughs> IBM comes up with some really dumb names. <laughs> I don't think they do the marketing guys enough. So we can actually move the partition over here, do maintenance on this, and then move it back. Okay? So there's a lot of flexibility in how we put these things together. And we talked about being able to do two eight, eight core boxes with that E6900. If we're doing Power 7, suddenly we end up with one single two core for doing the same work. That's the difference. It just gets better and better and better as we move along. Okay? We can migrate. We have a lot of experience in migrating. In fact, Steve Peer is going to come up and talk to you about a lot of the experience we've had. Being able to migrate these, these partitions, give an idea how we develop a, a return on investment solution for it, and help you understand um, what the process is about and what kind of expertise we have across the board between IBM, and Logica and ISIS, the expertise we have together, be able to make all this exciting stuff happen for you. Okay? Work optimization, virtualization, resiliency, two choices. You buy Intel from Intel or Intel from AMD, or you get power. You understand the difference, and very few people do. Very few people really understand what power is. You now understand the difference. You now have the opportunity to make a choice. And by the way, we Intel as well. We just don't smile when we do Intel. Okay? If companies want to do Intel, that's fine with us. Pick your poison. We'll help you administer it. <laughs> this is what I call this is what I call power to the people. These are the current game technologies on the market. The Xbox, the PlayStation, Nintendo, all of them run with power technology, all of them running Linux. So if you think you're not running Linux, your kids are. I call this power to the people. This is where we're headed. So I'm going to turn it over to Steve Fear. He's going to talk to you about where we go, what we've done, how we've done this in the marketplace, and give you a little bit of an idea of what an ROI looks like because he's got an actual test case for you. Steve? It's up to you, sir. Excuse me. One question. Sure. The, the, the ThinkPad uh, uh, laptop that I didn't used to have yeah, before. And it's got those. That's the stupid And stupid Now the Apples used to run power. All the Apple computers up until about a year and a half ago ran power. They only just went to Intel because they had such a demand for Windows. They have to run Windows. So what people do is they buy an Apple laptop, they put Fusion, what VMware calls Fusion, which is a single user version of VMware, they put Fusion on it, they run Apple in one partition, and they run Windows in another partition. It's the best of both worlds. So they to an Intel chip just recently. Microsoft uses IBM in the Xbox 360. Thanks. So this is Steve here. I'm actually a, uh, a power system sales rep for IBM. Um, we'll just talk really about how do you justify, you know, you heard about this, all this great technology from, from Terry. Um, after I'm done, you're going to hear from Jeff talk about how you optimize the environment that you have. Um, my own IBM is, is, is I have competitive 
customers. So the customers that I talk to are, are Sun and HP accounts that don't have IBM, or old accounts with an IBM that haven't bought in years. Here's our technology is that you 